Something that I thought would be interesting to talk about is how we say that someone has a disability or looks like they have a disability based on their actions and based on whether they're able to accomplish one thing at some point in time. And I think that's kind of like the major cultural method of deciding whether you think someone has a disability. And I think it's really fucked up and it doesn't work and it's prejudiced. So I think some examples of things that people would immediately diagnose as a disability is if someone has a mental disability, like they're mentally retarded and they can't learn to read. They just can't ever do it because they don't have that level of learning ability. Or if a person is physically disabled and they're in a wheelchair for their whole life and they can't walk because they just don't have any ability in their legs. But I think there are a lot of gray areas. For example, if a person has dyslexia, they have trouble learning to read, but that doesn't mean they can't ever read. And sometimes people who have physical disabilities, like cerebral palsy, they might be in a wheelchair, or they might be able to walk, or they might be able to walk, but it makes them really tired. So a lot of the time they'll use a wheelchair, but that doesn't mean that they're confined to a wheelchair and they're always in a wheelchair. And sort of the reason I became interested in this kind of thing is that I have Asperger's syndrome, which is basically a disability that makes you be a weirdo. <laughs> I guess that's a good way to put it. And sometimes when I would tell people that I had it, they would say that they didn't believe me, or they thought that I was lying, or they thought that my parents had paid someone to diagnose me with a disability because they didn't like me, or something like that, because they thought I didn't do what was in their head as their list of things that an Asperger's person should do. And I just think that comes off as so insensitive and just lacking a basic understanding of how people are and how people learn. Because, I mean, like, for example, the major way that you're supposed to be able to tell someone has Asperger's, right, is that, like, they're constantly talking about their interests and they won't let you talk about anything and they just monologue. And I've done that and I like doing it, but I'm smart enough that if I grow up and someone's like, hey, you have a disability that makes you monologue, I'm obviously going to try to pick out times when I'm monologuing and not do it, or I'm going to try to channel it into venues where it's less rude, like writing a blog or something, where I'm not supposed to have a conversation. So, I mean, I can develop new ways to deal with things, and then I won't appear the same as a stereotypical Asperger's person because I won't monologue as much. And I guess another example that isn't related to Asperger's is my friend is physically disabled, and he can usually walk without using, a, like, a cane or something like that. But at one point, like, for a few months, he was having a lot of trouble and he had to use a cane. And one time he went up, he tried to get up and get something, and he couldn't have a cane because he had to carry something. And he was like, oh, I really don't want to do this because when people see me walking without a cane, they'll think that I'm faking it when I use a cane. Which is really fucked up that someone would have made him feel like that. Like, that if for one minute he can accomplish walking without a cane, then it's not possible that it makes him tired to walk and he needs to use a cane. Because people always have the same level of disability, and if they're not doing something, it's never because it's hard for them. It's always because they can't do it. And that doesn't make sense. It's not a logical way to think about disability or people or anything. And then something else that's also related, but not exactly on the same subject, is when you get to the idea of people like me and my friend who can do things but can't always do them very well and need to work really hard to do them well. I feel like a lot of the time when people are working with people who have disabilities or just thinking about it, they think that if a person can't do something, it's okay for them not to do it. But if they can accomplish something, they have to do it. And if someone can look like they're normal sometimes, they have to look like they're normal all the time. And that's like the person's responsibility. And I don't think that's acceptable. Especially because if you're asking me, for example, to look like I'm normal all the time and never look like I'm weird, even in ways that don't hurt anyone, or I've failed at overcoming my disability, which I'm apparently supposed to do, if I don't do that, then it's my fault if I'm weird or if people judge me for being weird because I've made a choice to behave, but I don't think it really is a choice for a person to do something that isn't exhausting. Like, I think if you're asking someone to exhaust themselves to appear normal, that's what's fucked up, 
And it's not treating disabled people the same as non-disabled people if you want disabled people to look the same, because we don't look the same. So <laughs> that's what I think, basically.